What's going on, Arizona Sports Fan Family? Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Today, what I want to talk about is the final chapter of the Arizona Cardinals versus Patrick Peterson, or I should say Steve Kine versus Patrick Peterson. Pretty much, Patrick Peterson went on his podcast yesterday um, and basically giving his side of the story on what exactly went down during that whole, you know, disgruntledness of Patrick Peterson. Now, we're going to dive right into this whole situation, guys. Let's jump right into it. Roll that intro. All right, everybody, welcome back. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, I want to go ahead and talk about the final chapter between Patrick Peterson and Steve Kime and what made him disgruntled against Steve Kime. Now, before we do, definitely do me one huge favor. Smack the like button on this video and subscribe for more Arizona Cardinals content. Throwing out videos daily on this channel. Definitely go ahead and subscribe it up. It is for free. All right, everybody, let's go and dive right into it here. And I know what a lot of people are thinking, right? They're like, oh my God, Mike, another Patrick Peterson video. Let, let's let this die. Like, let's stop talking about him. And I see where you're coming from there. But I do believe that... That Patrick Peterson's side of the story does need to be told, right? Now, if you guys didn't listen to the entirety of the podcast, the All Things Covered, I highly recommend you, you know, listen into it. If it changes your mind, cool. If it doesn't, no worries. But I like to kind of listen to the entirety of the story. Biggest reason why is because the front office still is the same. And We've heard other players, right, that were disgruntled leaving the Arizona Cardinals organization as well. So I feel like it's something that we kind of, you know, need to know. Now, let's dive right into it, right? The big thing I want to talk about first is the trade request that he ended up wanting to, you know, leave the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. When I first heard this, I was pretty upset, right? Our star cornerback wanted to leave the Arizona Cardinals. And I felt a certain way, right? Kind of got bitter, saying things, some you know terrible things as well. Um, I remember back in 2018, it sucked. It hurt. Now, at that very moment, Patrick Peterson stated that in 2018, he looked at the Cardinals organization and it didn't look like they wanted to win. At least at that very moment, it looked like they were going through a rebuilding year. It didn't look like they were going for a championship. So what a player, you know, you know, that, that has already gotten eight Pro Bowls under his belt. He wanted to go ahead and, you know, look to see what else was out there. And Patrick Peterson wanted to get a ring. Now, I don't blame Patrick Peterson for doing that because most players that want to be great, they want to get a Super Bowl ring. That's the final thing that they need to check off their list. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, like to use Larry Fitzgerald as that, you know, uh, that one player that we always look to, like that standard. And it's so hard to do that, right? Larry Fitzgerald is... The, the perfect model of a player, right? Didn't say very much. He was a wide receiver, but didn't was not a diva at all. But it's hard to compare people to Larry Fitzgerald. Now, Patrick Peterson did still give us the production. Patrick Peterson still was the star for the Arizona Cardinals. The biggest difference is that he just didn't feel like the Arizona Cardinals were trying to go for the ring when his career was coming towards the the tail end of it all now obviously the the big thing that everybody talks about is oh man i wish you know larry fitzgerald got a ring right we say things like that but it's kind of the same thing with patrick at least in my mind patrick peterson wanted to go for a ring and that was his main thought focus of what he wanted to do do you guys remember the whole steve wilkes era it it was a mess right It, it honestly kind of felt like what we're going through now now obviously we have more talent now so it's kind of a different situation what we're dealing with with um year four of cliff compared to Steve Wilkes, but I can see where Patrick Peterson's frustrations was, right? He was looking for a ring. He wanted to to kind of, you know, cross that off his, you know, his checklist before he retires. Let's talk about his side of the story, right? And what ended up happening in the off season going into the, the 2021 season, essentially. So what happened was Patrick Peterson uh, was told by Steve Kime, right? They ended up having an exit interview every year. They have an exit interview with all the players. Like it happens kind of giving them an, you know, an understanding of like, hey, what's going to happen? You know, what we're trying to do, uh, that type of thing. Now, obviously, Patrick Peterson was privy to more information because he is a star. He's a big focal point in this um, Cardinals organization. Regardless if people thought he was regressing or not, you know, that whole situation is is moot. But basically, Steve Kime and him had a conversation. Steve Kime fluffed him up. Steve Kime told him a lot of different things like, hey, we want you to retire here as an Arizona Cardinal. This is going to be where your final landing spot is. Things like that, right? And if coming from a player that doesn't really know anything else, coming, you know, getting drafted from this organization, has spent his entire career with the organization, he believed Steve Kime. Now, was that foolish for Patrick Peterson? Probably, right? Um, It's a business at the end of the day. Peterson was Um, privy to the information that we were trying to go after J.J. Watt. Now, that obviously got him excited, right? Getting a big uh, piece 
on that defensive line that's going to be able to help out the secondary because let's be honest if you got a, a wrecker you know in the defensive line like we had Chandler Jones it was just going to be a lot easier for the uh, uh, the people in the secondary to do their job. So he was excited, right? He goes into the offseason, does a vacation with his family, spend time with the family, blah, 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 blah. Free agency is coming, and he sends a text message over to, you know, Steve Kime. Hey, what's the plans? What's going on? My agent said we still don't have a contract. What's happening? Blink. Crickets. Nothing from Steve Kime at all. All right. More weeks are going through. Free agency is getting closer and closer. Another text message. Nothing happened. Now, free agency finally hits. Patrick Peterson says that he did not receive a contract uh, contract etc. Or, or any contract at all during that free agency. There was something that kind of went around saying that there was a contract extended to Patrick, but Patrick said he didn't he never received it. So we're gonna kind of leave that there. Now, at that very moment, Patrick Peter Peterson felt a certain way, right? He kind of felt disrespected. He felt like he wasn't a, a part of the Cardinals organization's future. Um, and, and that's fine, right? I think what he was expecting in that exit interview was not to fluff him up to be like 100% you are going to be a Cardinal. This is where you're going to retire. If Steve Kime came out and said, hey, you know, 50%, we think we're going to bring you back. 50% think we don't bring you back. I think we would be having a different situation here, right? When you are in the leadership role, you do need to be able to communicate. That That's the biggest thing. You need to be able to adapt to different personalities because I promise you, all 53 people that are on this team on the final rosters have different personalities and you need to be able to speak to everybody to make them comfortable. It's, it's just the way that it is. Now, Patrick Peterson maybe bought into the words of Steve Kime a little too much. Yeah, possibly, right? Possibly. He thought he was going to, you know, retire as an Arizona Cardinal. Now, that's not the way that it ended up shaking out. The Vikings ended up, you know, giving him that, you know, that contract. He ended up moving. Um, and then Patrick said that he got a long, you know, uh, text message from Steve Kime. Of course, he didn't really go too much into what Steve Kime told him, but I'm only assuming it's long, uh, something along the lines of like, you know, thank you for you know doing this for the Cardinals organization. Hope you the, the best. All that. I I'm only assuming it said stuff like that. Now, this is kind of where my situation is. I, I do kind of side with Patrick Peterson because A, if my employer told me I have a job next year, I don't have to worry about relocation, right? I don't have to worry about my wife's career. I don't have to worry about my kid's school right now this is obviously going into his personal life now the the moment that the vikings were a thing you got to uproot right you got to uproot your life uproot your life and, and move it over to minnesota get a house his wife needs to get a job his kids need to go to a different school that different stuff and i think that was a a big focal point in terms of, in terms of like why he felt disrespected right just the the late notice the lack of communication between you know steve keim and patrick peterson that's where the whole big mess up was essentially. So it wasn't as dramatic as we all thought, or at least I thought, right? You know, a bickering match back and forth. No, no, no. Just a lack of communication. Um, and, and it should be something that these general managers and people in these high positions probably should have, but surprisingly they don't have. Um, and I think that's kind of one of the big things where you, you kind of feel for Patrick Peterson, right? But at the end of the day, he's no longer a Cardinal. He did say this is going to be the last time he's ever going to talk about it again. He doesn't want to bring it up ever again. And he mentioned it too. The fact that his beef, his situation was not with the Cardinals organization. It wasn't with the Cardinals fans. It was with Steve Kime. So I know there's a lot of fans out there that are saying a lot of things and a lot of nasty things about Patrick Peterson. What I found is that most of those people that are saying that, they haven't been Cardinals fans for more than probably 2015. I mean, there's some out there that are still doing it, right? And that's completely fine. That's your opinion. But I know there's a lot of newer Cardinal fans that came in with, you know, obviously the Kyler Murray hype, uh, you know, having a young quarterback that can do what he can do. But uh, Patrick Peterson is one of the greats. It is. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I've seen him play since 2012 um, when we drafted him. And honestly, I, I think he's probably one of the best draft picks in the first round that we ended up getting. I mean, Obviously, Larry Fitzgerald's also one of those greats as well that we ended up drafting in the first round as well. Also, do believe that you know Patrick Peterson, you know he's getting a lot of heat, which I I don't believe is is right. But I mean, you guys do whatever you want to do. It's it's your guys' personal life. So that's the whole situation on what ended up happening. What are your guys' thoughts on this Patrick Peterson storyline? Let me know in the comments below. This is most likely the last video that we're gonna ever talk about this whole you know Patrick Peterson drama situation. So as always, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day, and go Cards.